You're watching Minnesota Vikings now. I am Tom Downey alongside producer Patrick Seatman. We've got the latest Vikings rumors plus some news items at the back end of today's show. Before we break that down, including the, I'll go with interesting uh, trade idea out there, our bosses told us that they don't think we can get to 250 likes on today's video. I would like nothing more than to tell them to suck it and prove it wrong. So there will be way over 250 people watching on today's show. Let's prove them wrong. Like the video right now. Help us continue to grow here at Vikings now with the offseason upon us. There's a new trade idea out there. It's being floated by a couple different outlets. Um... Trey Lance for Kirk Cousins is the, the rumor more of an idea out there. And the argument that's been laid out isn't that bad of one because of the Kirk Cousins, Kyle Shanahan connection, etc. Shanahan and Cousins first worked together back in 2012. Shanahan has been a vocal supporter of Kirk Cousins. And the Niners are battling all kinds of quarterback drama. Brock Purdy gets hurt and... Cousins would be the upgrade button over Jimmy Garoppolo, although, ah, you know, maybe Brock Purdy is the upgrade button on that front. Here's what Kyle Shanahan has said about Kirk Cousins. To say that my Purdue guy is someone like Kirk Cousins, I mean, that's just, everyone knows my history with Kirk. We drafted him in the fourth round, I got to coach him for three games, then we were fired, I left. I thought we'd have a chance to get him in San Francisco in free agency, and I would have loved to have had him in free agency until Jimmy came along the year before because I thought we could have won with him just like Minnesota has. That's a pretty good endorsement, I believe, of, of Kirk Cousins from Shanahan, who does fit what Shanahan likes to do on offense in that scheme. Now, the flip side idea here of adding Trey Lance is you're getting out of the Kirk Cousins contract and you are gambling, emphasis on the gambling side, on Lance as your franchise guy, even if you end up sticking around, uh, even if Purdy sticks around, it's not a Kirk Cousins trade or he goes a three-way trade, whatever. Purdy could be the guy for the Niners moving forward. If you hit on Trey Lance, now you have your franchise guy for the next 10 years. You've got a mobile quarterback, which I think you need in the modern-day NFL. I don't think you need statue back there anymore. I think mobility and the quarterback run is essential as NFL defenses and offenses continue to evolve and at some points regress. But make no mistake, Lance is a massive gamble, and it is a we're all getting extended gamble or we're all getting fired gamble. So we'll talk more about this here in depth, but would you trade or you want to trade for Trey Lance? Y for yes, N for no. Go vote for us in the comment section. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So the ad break comes here on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Y for yes or N for no. Lance has not played that much football uh, at North Dakota State. He really hasn't. He, he missed a year because of the COVID stuff. He then barely played his first year, got hurt. The completion percentage does not look particularly great. That's 55%. But you basically got like a four-game sample size, and one of those games played in, in a monsoon in Chicago. So you're, you're already taking out a very a big chunk of your small sample size. That makes it tough to evaluate there. Good average, big arm. Dual threat can run, can run over guys, but it's basically you're still gambling on the the pre-draft evaluation because you haven't seen much of anything in his time uh, in S San Francisco. He has yet to prove he's the guy, but he could be. Or it could be a disaster and everyone ends up getting fired. But I do think Minnesota is a good landing spot for Trey Lance's perspective because you've got a young, offensive-minded head coach. I think Kevin O'Connell's smart enough to figure out how to maximize Lance as a runner and still, of course, get the ball to Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, whoever your other receivers end up being this upcoming year. You've got a good offensive line led by bookend tackles in Christian Darrisaw and Brian O'Neill. So I would not, in the end, get my hopes up for a Cousins-Lance swap, and frankly... I would wonder if the Niners have to give you something else back, maybe one of those multiple third-round picks they have but or more. But it's a fun idea for long-term. Like That's a fun Madden-style move there. So I get the theories are out there. Eh, I'm not sure it's the most likely outcome in the end. Now, this is going to be your off-season hub for all things Minnesota Vikings, so make sure you are subscribed. News, rumors, free agency, trades, draft, everything else kind of in between there, hit that sub button right now.
Speaking of the in-between, the defensive coordinator search ongoing here and kind of in a holding pattern for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Ryan Nielsen was a top contender for this job. He has now joined the Atlanta Falcons as their defensive coordinator. So you got guys like Brian Flores, Mike Pettin, and Sean Desai as the other options out there for the Vikings. The known, emphasis on the known interview standpoint there. I believe the Vikings are waiting on the Arizona Cardinals coaching search here because this seems like Flores could get the Cardinals job. In the event he does not get the Cardinals job, then Minnesota ends up being a prime landing spot for Brian Flores. It would be a home run higher. And if it's not Flores, someone like Sean Desai makes the most sense there in the end in terms of adding a big outcome he's a young defensive mind began his career as the assistant director of football operations for the miami hurricanes got to start somewhere right he's an assistant coach for a long time with the chicago bears and that vic fangio style scheme since fangio's now maybe in miami or back to san francisco uh, we'll see about that one there uh defensive coordinator for a year the bears defense wasn't great the offense sucked more he gets fired because the entire coaching staff gets canned they bring in a defensive mind matt eberflus goes to, to seattle i think helped that defense fairly significantly the uh, associate head coach and defense is in kind of a higher ranking tier of like well your coordinator quality, we already have one of those, so just come on, help us out, and you'll get a D.C. job next year. Sean Desai is a very intriguing piece. Uh, if you cannot land Brian Flores, who I think, make no mistake, is the number one option for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, you can still run that 3-4 front, heavy blitz packages, strong run stopping. Look at what the Dolphins did with Brian Flores and a very similar overall roster defensively to what they were without Flores and Josh Boyer and company. Pretty clearly that Flores made a massive impact there. Now, it might be a one-year and he's gone thing, although we've seen defensive coordinators not get a job, like, you know, or pass on jobs because you only get, in most cases, especially if you're a defensive mind, you get one, maybe two tenders of being head coach. So Flores will be a little bit cautious, I think, from that standpoint. But when it comes to the defensive coordinator, I think we get traction at some point this week. Uh, I think it is kind of waiting on the Cardinals' job. Who do you want the Vikings to hire? Drop a coach's name for me, or coach's plural name, in the comments. If you want to bet on the Super Bowl, all the prop bets, whatever, the national anthem length, do it BetUS, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125 for 125% deposit bonus. The Eagles are two massive line swings, by the way. Kind of shocking. Uh, how much movement there has been. That does not happen very often with Vegas and the sportsbook out there. Eagles are now a two-point favorite. They're the, they, they have the best team, but the Chiefs have the best quarterback. So you can go bet on Chiefs or Eagles at BetUS. Chadsports.com slash bet. Promo code chat125. Some futures deals to announce. These are all kind of practice squad guys whose their contracts expire, so then you bring them back and they fill out your 90-man roster now. Tristan Jackson, that's your boy, right, Patrick? That's the guy you like? Yeah, that's what you like. Blake Prohl, yeah, that's another Prohl in there. Tay Gowan, who's kind of bounced around the NFL. Nick Mew is your draft pick at tight end last year. Benton Whitley at linebacker. I will only call him Josh Skoll because it's more fun, the offensive lineman. TJ Smith, and a bit more of a veteran there in Sheldon Day, the former Notre Dame, or Notre Dame if you're French, defensive tackle, who has bounced around the NFL, spent some time briefly with the Minnesota Vikings, and maybe most notably was with the Browns. One other minor news note here. The NFL has set the salary cap for this upcoming offseason at $224.8 million. Uh, that's a lot of money. I will make a note, by the way, if you've seen the um, uh, SPO track over the cap numbers of like how much salary cap space the team has, they were already projecting a very similar number. I think I saw like 225 and like, 224.6 or 5 was one of the other ones. They were all right on it because, ah, the nerds are good at their jobs sometimes when it comes to math. So you're not suddenly getting more money. That was the expected number or at least close to it. But it's nice to see that number keep on going up. That is the end of today's show. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. Show us today by typing in real one in the comments section. Producer Patrick will be sure to give you guys some love in the comments.